Lots of students tend to ask how they can figure out the uncertainty on a linear best fit line from a graph they've made in Excel. The solution to that is actually already built into Excel, and in this screencast I will show you how you can use Excel to obtain uncertainties on a graph with a linear best fit line. You can see here that I have collected some data for the change in temperature of a solution over time, graphed it, and added a linear trend line along with the equation. If you haven't done all of that, then you'll need to do so before trying any of what I'm about to describe. The function we are going to use in Excel is called linest, and, is, and it is what is called an array formula. What that means is that it will return values across multiple cells when the formula is only entered into one cell. Most formulas in Excel only return values in a single cell. To use the linest function, you need to select four cells in a two by two block. And it doesn't matter where those cells are on the spreadsheet. You're going to type equals sign, L-I-N-E-S-T, and then open parentheses. So like this. And what you can see there is that the rest of the formula has popped up underneath that cell. Uh, so that's telling me to put in my known Y's, my known X's, and then two other things that I'll address in a minute. So the first data range we want to select, which you can see in bold there, is the known Y values. And my known Y values are my temperatures. So I'm just gonna simply click and drag all the way down. Okay, so that's my known uh, Y value range, B2 to B32. I'm gonna put a comma in, press space, do the same thing for my known x values. There's my known x values. And now I need to deal with the last two things. So the const, where it says const in brackets, what that means is if you put in a one there, it means that the best fit line won't be forced to go through the origin. And if you put a zero there, then it means that it will be forced to go through the origin. So we don't wanna force our best fit line to go through origin. Clearly that doesn't fit the data set here. Uh, so I'm going to press one. Okay, to tell it to uh, calculate the, uh, the, the y-intercept normally. And then the last value, stats, I want uh, the stats to be true as well, to be one. And what that means is it will return the uncertainty on the slope and the y-intercept and not just the values themselves. You can see I have the values in the graph already, so I wouldn't be doing this if I, if I needed those values. Then I'm gonna close the bracket. And this is the most important step and the thing that I screwed up a few times when I was learning how to do this. You do not want to press enter. You want to press control, shift, and enter. If I press enter, all that I will see is just the, the, the value for slope for the best fit line. And that's not super useful because I have that already in the graph. But if you press control, shift, enter, you can see I've just got four values that have popped up there. And so those four values on the top left, we have the slope. So that's the slope, and you can see that matches the slope in the equation on the graph. And on the top right, we have our y-intercept. And again, that matches pretty closely with what's on the, uh, the graph there. And then underneath the slope, you have the uncertainty on the slope. And lastly, the uncertainty on the y-intercept. And so you can see why those might be useful depending on what your lab was, if you wanted to uh, for example, maybe your slope is your final answer and you need to calculate a percentage error uh, and compare it to the percentage uncertainty. You can use this absolute uncertainty that I've got uh, underneath my slope value to figure out what the percentage uncertainty on slope is. So it's actually quite useful. Uh, what else? Oh, it's also good to know how this was calculated. So this, uh, this slope was calculated using what's called the least squares method. And that's how Excel always calculates slope on a linear data set. And if you want to Google that, you can do that. You can just Google least squares method. Um, it's not really important to understand how it works. It's something you could do manually. It would take a long time, but obviously Excel can do it for you. And the good thing to know about this technique is that it's given me a, a value here uh, in cell E7 that you can see for my slope that I could then use for another formula maybe uh, later on um, if I wanted to do something, um, whatever that might be. And I wouldn't have to take the, uh, the slope value that I've got in my graph and actually put that into a cell. This is a lot more precise. It has more decimal places. It's essentially an exact value, whereas 1.4345 is actually a, a rounded value. So that's kind of nice. You can get your slope to more decimal places if you use this method as well. All right, there you go. That's how you calculate your uncertainty on your slope and your y-intercept for a linear data set.